utafuta uongozi kwa kutumia dini au kutumia kabila unagawa watu kazi ya uongozi ni kujenga watu wao kitu kimoja watu wanaanza kujiingia udini kwa kujiingia ni mambo ya dini dini sasa hatujali dini ya mtu anaingia mwenyewe dini yake basi Watu wa Kenya walikuwa wanajuana kwa makabila yao. Huyu mtukuyu Huyu mjaluo, huyu muluhia Na wanatajana kwa makabila yao Watu wa Tanzania walikuwa kabisa kabisa hatujui makabila yao Nyerere himself Mwalimu as he was famously known Where did he come from? He is of peasant origins From the Butiama area Near the lake North west Or to the north of the, near the lake of, of Nyanza, Victoria. His father was the chief of the Zanaki tribe, as people prefer to call it now, ethnic group. Burrito Nyerere. Nyerere Burrito, that was his father's name. So now, his education and his brain was working from a very early age even before school. He was known as the local championship champion of Bao. Bao is a, a, a game that's played on a board with holes in it and marbles or stones. Equivalent to a chess game, but this is more intricate, I think, from our origins. It's played all over Africa. By the age of 10, 12, he was already the champion in his own region. So that gives you some kind of indication of how brainy this young man was. Primary school, he sailed through. He went to Tabora Secondary School, which was a church school, where he qualified greatly in Kiswahili and history. And he moved off after that to Makerere University, where he started all sorts of associations. Tanzanian Welfare, Afri African Western Welfare Association, Tanzanian African Association, Tanzanian Students Association. So Nyerere was busy every minute of the day. Wherever he was, he was thinking about Tanzania. This is where his humble and simplicity trend came from as a leader later on and as a person continued to his death. Now, he loved the land, he tilled the land, and all his politics were based on the land. This is what we have to understand Nyerere from. Everything he did was for the welfare of his people. So, after Makerere, he came back and taught in his old school at Tabora. And then from, that's where the Mwalimu name comes from, the teacher. From then, he went to do his masters and then went to Scotland, Edinburgh, to do his masters, to finish his masters in, in, in history. Um, from then he came back to Tanzania. So all this time he's forming associations and looking after his people. Then in the 1940s, after World War II, he became, uh, he started sort of playing with politics as welfare leads to politics, anything social leads to politics. And that's where his party and his beginnings of political life began. So in the mid-50s, he's already thinking about independence and self-determination. So he forms TANU, which is Tanzania African National Union. This he sells to his people all across. And I mean, he went the breadth and length of Tanzania, or Tanganyika as it was then, 
teaching and showing his people the self-determination vision that he had. This was very welcomed and by the advent of independence in 1961, the country and the people were well behind this young man because he was only young, one of the youngest leaders we had. So his welcoming attitude and his play with politics brought him to the fore. Other world leaders started noticing him because he was a force to beckon with. He, when offered independence, Kenya was on the verge of independence and so was Uganda. As a Pan-Africanist, a very, very staunch Pan-Africanist, he asked Kenyatta and Obote, his friends, if he could stay his independence so that they could become independent as one unit. That portrays how much of a Pan-Africanist he was. And this is where Mwalimu became a force to be reckoned with. He then looked around Tanzania to see how well to perform, how to develop the country into a force on itself. And then he combined with Zanzibar to form Tanzania, the Republic of Tanzania.